The following podcast contains alcohol-enhanced conversations about alcohol, as well as the potential for the discussion about topics of dubious, disturbing, possibly offensive, but usually hilarious interest. The opinions stated herein are solely of the persons making them, and any endorsement of these opinions by any other party is not implied. Foul language is likely, but intolerant viewpoints are not. Listener intoxication is advised. Hello and welcome to episode 55 of the Neat Glass Sponsored Whiskey Tangent Podcast. I'm Scott. I'm Ed. And today we have another cocktail episode for you and mm. one that we feel is a perfect match for the summer barbecue season, exploring the increasingly crowded world of whiskey bottled cocktails. You're taking on the run, Scott, <laughs> when you really try to get some. <laughs> Already crickets. We've only been recording for a minute. <laughs> Very <laughs> introduced everybody. Uh, no, right. Uh, call them pre-mixed, pre-made, or ready to drink. They all seem to be the rage right now. And with human laziness being the huge economic driver that it is, there's likely no end in sight. And joining us at our lazy-ass virtual cookout are a pair of jacket recipients you haven't heard together since Christmas, Sue and Siobhan, the Pixie, and the Mayor. Hello. Hi, everyone. Uh, but up first, as usual, Ed's going to fiddle with our gas knobs, <laughs> light up all of our grills, and tell us which bottled cocktail concoctions we'll be comparing and conceivably complaining about tonight. Right. Thanks, Scott. So, you know, these are cocktails that are made to go, and you've seen them for years. They've been margaritas. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a the hurricane, you know, comes in a pre-made. and <laughs> Slurricane. Yeah, the slurricane. <laughs> and um, now they're starting to branch off into whiskey. And yeah. um, we came here to determine, you know, when you're going over your friend's house and they're not whiskey friendly, you don't feel like dragging along your rye whiskey and your vermouth and your bitters and a cherry. Like, can I just bring a ready-to-drink pre-made Manhattan or old-fashioned? And, and will that be good enough? Right. Yeah, we decided to put some of the popular brands to the test and yeah. see if they're worthy. You know, are they really ready to drink? Do they have to be tweaked or not? And to go against them, Scott has made a Scott version of yeah. the old fashioned. Uh, we have two versions pre made. We have the on the rocks version and also one by Bullet. Yeah. Uh, then we're going to do a Manhattan, which we have the on rocks version of that. Mm -hmm. Do we have a Sardo cherry? We, we do. do. <gasps> so we can add them in <gasps> if you that's wish. A, that's, oh that's legal. Oh my God, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we have the High West 36 vote, which we've had for a very long time. It's been really a fixture in Scott's fridge for several months. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this been, we've kept it cold. Yeah, it's been in the works for a while. And this episode. Once again, Scott's made his My own own drink. And then we have a surprise third one that we're going to save to the end to introduce. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And that's because it's such a really weird freaking it, it's, concoction. It's like, crazy strange. I mean, it's technically, I didn't realize it was even a cocktail when I got it. Yeah. And then when you look at what the ingredients are, it actually counts as a cocktail. Yeah. So we're going to do the old fashioned up first. And Scott's going to tell us about the bullet one. I'm going to tell us about the on the rocks one. Right. So here we go. Uh, the bullet old fashioned. So there's a lot of text on the bottle. So I kind of condensed it all into a uh, short three paragraphs. <laughs> And they use very big words. You'll be impressed by the words that are on this bottle. One can be a great host, or one can mix great cocktails. But rarely can one do both simultaneously with any efficacy. Ergo, the contents of this bottle, which allow you to enjoy the company of your friends while they enjoy your hospitality, conviviality, engaging repartee, <laughs> and a premium cocktail experience right from the bottle. And while it is certainly true that the old-fashioned is a staple of bartenders everywhere, we wanted this recipe to be worthy of the bullet name. 
As such, we carefully crafted a special bullet cocktail with Kentucky straight bourbon and bespoke mixture of orange bitters. Because the only constant on the frontier is change, but the frontier is not a place. It's our innate capacity to evolve, to invent, and to adapt to a rapidly changing world, all while steadfastly maintaining our highest standards and expectations for quality. Bullet Classic Cocktails are an <laughs> eloquent answer to this moment and every moment wow. to come. Wow. I love the fact that they won't let go of the frontier. No, they like won't. they're going to stay on the American frontier. Uh, I know. I mean, they're as much in part of the American frontier as uh, Scott's mom, who's a pioneer. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear that next week. Yeah. You understand what I mean next week yeah. when you see the short. That'll be a perfect joke bomb. Yeah. It'll land next week. <laughs> Boom. So what's in here, Scott? Okay. So basically it's just, you know, sugar bullet bourbon and mixture of orange bitters. It's 75 proof. The price was like $38. Okay. So nothing crazy. Uh, that's about it. I can smell a year. You can smell a year. I can smell a year. What year is it? It's got to be 1970 or 1972. Interesting. Okay. A very sunny day. Oh God, <laughs> so great. I love it. <laughs> a sunny day in 1972. Yes. I just get like sunshine from this. I'm getting oh, candy. Candy? candy. Yes. I candy. smell. I smell the orange. Very orangey. Very orangey. Yeah. yeah. The citrus is definitely there, but there's something else that gives it like this kid-like quality, almost like a cotton candy or a... Yeah. Yeah. There's a sweetness to it, like a, a, a young sweetness. This feels good. A young sweetness to be tasted for the first time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. It continues, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> it was a warm, hot summer day. I'm totally engaged. <laughs> engaged or engorged. Or engorged. Oh, so she breaks into, <laughs> she was just 17. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's oh. the creepiest song. <laughs> it really is. It's really creepy. Oh, I just tasted it. Wow, it's pretty good. Uh-oh. Yeah. It's got All a right. little burn to it for being 75. And um, once again, we have no ice. Wow. We have no cherries or anything like that. Oh, my God. I like that. It's like Christmas. Yeah, you definitely get that bitter spiciness yeah. on, on the end from whatever bespoke bitters they use. I'm the done. Only thing I need is a cherry. <laughs> it's like, I'm done. It was like a Nessie's quick. I took the first sip all the way to the head. <laughs> and like, I couldn't stop drinking. It was so good. Yeah, we have a lot to taste tonight. So I only poured small amounts for everybody. But wow. yeah, absolutely. Help yourself. Well, I can't believe there's not a curve for me on that. Oh, 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 Jesus. <laughs> and <laughs> he's going to break the equipment. <laughs> we so my equipment, I don't care. <laughs> Rawr and smash. <laughs> We're going to get more. <laughs> this is quite good. This might, uh, I mean, apologies to Anders ahead of time. This is one of the best old fashions I think I've ever had. Is that hyperbole? I mean, it's good. I'm worried that it's going to be too sweet after a while. Yeah. Ice. Mm. You know, like I would probably maybe add more whiskey. I would definitely add it. more whiskey. Yeah. You know. Okay. So, yeah. So we're not adulterating these or anything. No. We're, we're, we want to taste them right out of the right. cocktail. But right. you could absolutely right. adulterate this. That cocktail, yeah. Ooh, like that it. would just last me so long. <laughs> I would add more whiskey. Yeah. You had a little bit more whiskey. Maybe yeah. maybe some uh, maybe orange peel yep. or something. Cut I'm, I'm strongly against exactly. adultery. So yeah. I agree with you, Scott. So am I. Oh, bring it on. <laughs> I don't understand. Sue, the only one married here. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, wa <laughs> I'm wavering. On. I'm waiting for Sue's opinion. <laughs> she said I she was all in. <laughs> no, no, I might retract. <laughs> JK, oh, Steve. JK. Sorry, oh, sorry, Steve. Oh. JK. Um, I mean, I really like this. This is terrific. For, this is really good. For a giant bottle like this at $38, you're probably going to get 12 pours so, out like, of it. I feel like if you went to your kitchen for friends who were like, hey, with three guys, like, hey, we'll take old fashions. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> and then just like poured these in glass and like took an orange peel off of an orange and stuck it in and brought it out they'd be like wow honestly that's all you need to make an official yeah. cocktail is some sort of garnish yeah and no one would know that you poured it out of a bottle tailgate or something right like right like oh, oh this is grab it we don't have to bring like the whole you, you, you don't yeah you don't have to bring a case yeah, of we don't beer want to drink straight whiskey because we're going to concerts so it's right a little yeah bit lower proof and we can like kind of give us some staying power right. you know yeah it's perfect for that so let's look at the next one the next yeah. one is um from a company called on the rocks the instructions are to pour over ice and enjoy so okay even, even they're thinking what Sue said. Right. So starting true to the original recipe, we keep our old fashioned strong and simple using a generous pour of Knob Creek bourbon, bitters, cane sugar, orange, cherry, and lemon zest. Interesting. Bringing the bar to you. Okay. And in their other versions, they have different name brands from different distilleries and companies. Mm. Could they make a Cosmo and they make something with a tequila too? All and right. that's 70 proof. 70. So, okay. So a little less alcohol. A little less alcohol. The color is a lot lighter. It's so Very much lighter. Light. Yeah. yeah. The nose were... is completely different. Not nearly as powerful. I am getting Pine Sol 7-Up. 
I, I know what you're saying. It smells a little no. like a lemon cleaner yes. to me. Almost. No, but not yeah. in a bad way. Mm. It's because it's so light. It's just so faint. I just tasted it. It's amazing how completely different old fashions can be. Because this is yeah. not. An, I'll let see your opinions, but I would think this was a totally different drink. Yeah, it does taste different. Yeah, you're right, Ed. The old fashioned is the most versatile yeah. cocktail because yeah. it's really just whiskey, bitters, and sugar. Yeah. That's it. And then you can do all kinds of different sugars, all kinds of different whiskeys, and all kinds of different beers. Right. What did I make like a, an elderflower yeah. version of yeah. one when we did the combat cocktails, which was episode 40? Hey, this would be really good if you were like, I don't know, suffering from pneumonia <laughs> or bronchitis. <laughs> you pour it in a frying pan. Wow. You oh. add some um, lemon to it. You add like a scoop of sugar and you give it to your grandchild who's suffering wow. from an asthma attack. <laughs> and that's exactly what I had probably in like 1986 for my just grandmother. I was going to ask you what year it was. <laughs> it's completely against the ready to drink philosophy though. She's, she's right. putting it in a slow cooker like a stew. Yeah, talk about adulterating. Jesus. <laughs> right. No. Yeah. But that was the so, way they did it in the country, I guess, or whatever. Yeah, but right. I guess, so, you know, to get it down smoother. This definitely has way more citrus notes, but yet it doesn't have the sweet candied orange like no one i'm getting lemon strong. i'm getting lemon yeah and I definitely. De- i'm not a fan of lemon yes so i'm right. not enjoying it right yeah right i do like the bullet one better than the knob creek one here absolutely i don't think it's even close it, no it's not a terrible drink no, no but but it's not the bullet killed it yeah it has like chemical eat yeah, yeah. It's, chemical it's like a, a bit taste. artificial yeah, yeah like taste. artificial lemon yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like the on the rocks old-fashioned plus a chemical aftertaste which takes away from the flavor yeah. of the initial Agreed. sip yeah. yeah the initial yeah. sip isn't bad like oh this is oh wait a minute <laughs> yeah yeah like it's like oh this is pretty oh like, no. we were becoming really impressive with the smells like yeah. oh wow this could really be yeah. something you know but so i think we should taste scott's all right Ooh. so here's what i did with mine and i asked <laughs> anders what his favorite bourbon to use in an old-fashioned was and he said evan williams bottle and bond mm. and by coincidence we just happened to have some yeah so i used evan williams bottle and bond and i made Made a brown sugar syrup instead of a simple syrup and 12 dashes of Angostura bitters because it's a very sweet drink and I have six ounces of the Evan Williams bottle and bond which is a hundred proof mm. right. I don't make old fashions very much uh, so this was just sort of a stab in the dark to Shot try to compare with what it was and you honestly didn't Shot have any taste dark. before now I just tasted it to make sure it wasn't awful <laughs> <laughs> I have to tell you right now it's yeah. really good oh thank you I think the you know. Wait better. a minute. The Why isn't better? anyone saying anything about Ed going ahead of everybody? It's like I wonder, the second wh- time. When would that be different? <laughs> <laughs> this time. He doesn't even give it's us a cold. chance. But I'm a fast drinker. I can tell you right now, it's delicious, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you don't even have to drink. It. Case closed. <laughs> That's a good point. I apologize. We'll. I tell you, Scott will just rework it so I come in last. <laughs> no, no, it's fine because now there's comedy. <laughs> but like, so, but go back to it and tell us what you're smelling on it, everybody. I smell New I sm- Year's Eve, <laughs> 1992, my first Christmas in Southern New Jersey. Wow. And how they when used to Santa show. When Santa didn't come. <laughs> <laughs> Santa burned in the chimney. When they used to play. Bobby, what is that smell? <laughs> when they used to play Saturday Night Fever, the movie after the Dick Clark special. Oh, my God. They used to play that on Channel 6. Wow. Your parents let you stay up late. Oh, well, yeah. Mm. I was 11. Uh, <laughs> I was, come on. She's allowed to stay up all night when she's 11. Yeah, it I was mean, New Year's on, Eve. She's mixing the drinks by yeah. then. <laughs> no, she's selling I drinks on the black them. market. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Out of the back of a van. <laughs> Down by the river. When well, my brother and sister were young, we used to fake New Year's at like 930. So they would go to, oh, fuck really? to bed so that we could actually hang out without them. Oh, that's so funny. So burn Dave and Deb. <laughs> Damn. But right. it gives me after Christmas. Mm. All right. So I just Mine tasted it. licorice. Licorice. Interesting. The black licorice. And, I, and that, you know what that is? That's the bitters. So now that I taste it, mm-hmm. I could see this being a problem to the point where you're drinking <laughs> it so much yeah. and it tastes so good. And you could probably add something to it to mm-hmm. even give it more flavor. Oh, yeah. Old fashions are dangerous. Yeah. even yeah. heat it up a little bit and add some cinnamon. Oh, it would be like a hot toddy or something. Yeah. Yeah, this could be a problem, but I am congratulating you because yeah. this is delicious. It is. It's very good. I'm oh. about to take a sip of the other. Just yeah, I, I just did that. And I think the difference is the bullet is a little bit more orange citrusy and it has yeah. a nice spiciness on the I end of it you, that I mine like, actually doesn't. I like the bullet better than yours. Yeah, I honestly think I do and too. And yours kills but, the second one. But though. mine's yeah. pretty close. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, yours is way better than the second one we yeah. tasted. I don't think I'll be able to really tell until I have like a Scott in Hatton. <laughs> well, that's coming up. That's coming up. Mm. Tune in. Tune in. Second section. And now 
Oh. Guess what time it is, guys? What time is it, Scott? It's Quizky time! Oh. Yay! Yay! All right, so uh, this is the bottled cocktails edition. <laughs> round one will be about glass bottles. Round two will be about cocktails. And round three will be about glass bottles or cocktails. Mm. Uh, <laughs> If you haven't been with us before, I will just drop in the rules from a previous podcast. In the first round, a first chime in correct answer is 100 points. The second chime in correct answer is 50 points. The third chime in correct answer is 25. However, if you get it wrong, negative 25. Holy fuckaroni. I have Pixie. I have Sue Stalker. <laughs> ah, that would be me, Trebek. And... and <laughs> And Vader Vamp. <laughs> okay. All right. I love it. Um, are you ready? I am ready. Round one. Okay. Question one. According to archaeologists, who created the first glass bottle back in 1500 BCE? Was it A, the Mesopotamians in Western Asia, B, the Mayans in Central America, C, the Chinese of the Shang Dynasty, or D, the lizard people of the Illuminati? <laughs> Ed. C. C, the Chinese of the Shang Dynasty. That is incorrect. Uh, Vader Vamp. Siobhan. Mayans. The Mayans is incorrect. (gasps) Not the lizard. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. So the Mesopotamians. That's correct. Yay. Sue gets 25 points. All right, Sue. (laughs) (laughs) I expected more from the Chinese. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, right. That's pretty surprising. Did I win? What do I get? (laughs) Whatever. It's literally the first question of the first round. All right, so fiddlesticks. yeah, fiddlesticks. This is law. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, no, normally I win the first round and then lose the rest. <laughs> right, then loses everyone. Okay, so uh, question number two: As everyone knows, glass bottles are made from glass, <laughs> and glass is made from heating silica or sand, sodium carbonate or soda ash, and this common sedimentary rock. Is it A. Feldspar, B. Sandstone, C. Limestone, or D. Shale? Siobhan. B. B. Sandstone. <laughs> That is incorrect. Mm, I don't like this. <laughs> Ed? Shale. Shale? D? That is also incorrect. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> so, Sue, now just to tell you, because you've never played this before, yes. and it was in the instructions that I dropped in from another episode. <laughs> the last person to chime in, yes. if you get it wrong, you'll get negative 25 points because there's only two answers left. Oh, well, now I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Because I'm winning. Yeah, right. Right? So why yeah. would I, yeah. Exactly. Why exactly. would you get negative 25? You exactly. go back to zero. I know. I got you. So the answer is C, limestone. Oh, I was going to guess that. <laughs> <laughs> bum, bum, <ba-dum. laughs> Question number three. Speaking of making glass, there are several natural phenomena that can also make glass or glass-like substances. Which of the following cannot? Is it A, lightning, B, volcanoes, C, meteorites, or D, wildfires? Ed. Wildfires. That is correct. Woo! Oh, wait a minute. We're competing. Boo. <laughs> yeah, fuck that guy. Uh, the first chime in answer. That's 100 points. Mm. Hey. Like I said, I win the first round and then lose badly. <laughs> Can what? I have some of your points, Ed? <laughs> sure. Here, I have beads for you, too. Let me throw you some beads. Damn. <laughs> Glass beads? Glass beads, go with, this, go with the theme of the... <laughs> right. Okay. Glass beads? Uh, no, they're special beads. They don't go around your neck. If you know what I'm saying? Oh. Is it A? <laughs> is it A, pearl necklace? <laughs> right. Or is it D, regrettable? <laughs> mm. Question number four. Glass bottles can be recycled multiple times without losing their purity. In fact, recycled glass requires less energy than is required for making new glass, saving as much energy as is needed to power a washing machine for approximately how long? A, 10 minutes. B, 20 minutes. C, 30 minutes. Or D, one hour. Ed, quick on the buzzer. 20 minutes. 20 minutes is incorrect. Siobhan. 10. 10 minutes is correct. Yay! So Siobhan gets 50 points. All right, all right, all right. Ed is still in the lead. Mm -hmm. Last question. 
of round one. It's, Ed's not my name. I go by what? Sue Stalker is in the lead. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> The bane of party goers the world over, beer in glass bottles can sometimes become skunked after being exposed for prolonged periods of time to which of the following? Mm. Is it A, warm temperatures, B, freezing and thawing, C, sunlight, or D, an actual skunk? Sue. C. Sunlight. Yes. It's correct. Yes. Woo! Yes. Great answer, Sue. Great answer. Oh, so Sue is vaulted into the lead with 125 with Ed wow. close on her heels as a stalker would be. <laughs> right where a stalker should be, right behind her. <laughs> with 100 and Javon with 50, 50. right there. All right, so let's take yeah. a break, clean some glasses. We'll come back with the ready to drink bottled Manhattans. All right, be right back. So we're back to do the next ready to drink bottled cocktail, the Manhattan. Yep. We have three versions of it. Uh, we have the High West 36 vote. We have the On the Rocks. This is their version of the Manhattan. And we have a Scott Hatton that mm-hmm. he's prepared for us, um, and which we're all pretty fond of. We've been drinking them for years. <laughs> That's right. So tell us about the first one we're going to drink, the High West 36 Vote. Okay. So High West Distillery's 36 Vote Barrel Manhattan. Why is it called 36 Vote, Scott? <laughs> because it commemorates Utah's role as the 36th and deciding vote to end. Prohibition. Well, hold on, Scott, because oh, okay. the Supreme Court, the way it's been acting, we might be going right back to Prohibition because <laughs> it's back in time month. <laughs> Go ahead. On December 5th, 1933, Utah ratified the 21st Amendment to the United States Constitution, thus forever ending the noble experiment. The 36-vote barrel Manhattan is made by blending High West's double rye whiskey with Via, V-Y-A, brand sweet vermouth from Oregon, and Angostura bitters. Once the ingredients have been blended together, they are barrel-aged for 120 days in casks that were previously used to mature rye whiskey. The barrel-aging process oxidizes the cocktail, allowing the ingredients to mellow and yielding notes of baking spices, oak, cinnamon, black pepper, sweet cherries, dried fruits, and milk chocolate. Chocolate. The proof is 74. The price mm. is about 50. Ed, do you remember? Somewhere. What you paid it for wasn't this? quite 50, but it was like, it was over 45. Okay, in that area. Oof. So we did the double rye on episode yeah. 14. Yeah. Um, that's a 95.5 rye from MGP, but also mixed in with their own rye, their 80 20. 80% rye and 20% malted rye. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hold up, everybody. Wait a minute. Wait. Sue's blowing her nose. <laughs> Cut. Cut. Time out. Everybody take five. <laughs> It's okay. okay. It's not your oh fault. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, sniff and taste it. No. Yeah. If Sue can. <laughs> yeah, if, uh, can you can you? I mean You got can you smell it? COVID over there? <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> wow. Wait a minute, why I lick the microphone and lick my microphone. <laughs> Remember, remember when I talked about regret. <laughs> this is only our second drink, but l- literally our fourth. <laughs> no, actually fifth, because counting the short we did earlier. Yeah. All right. Hmm. It's, I mean, it smells like Manhattan. It smells cherries and sort of the rye yeah. and, and uh, the, the spiciness from the bitters. I would call this an alt Manhattan because, I don't know, I just get more fruit. Oh, yeah. More fruitiness. Yeah. Remember, we are missing the splash of cherry flavor that a cherry brings to it. I know, True. but this already has something in it that yeah. gives. It, it does have already. a cherry, but yeah. it's not as sweet as the Luxardo cherries. That this have. would be dangerous for yeah. me. Yeah. I, media cherry for me. You, oh, yeah. It, it almost tastes like a port. It has that um, really intense, That's very fair. fruity sweetness to it. Very fair. I can't get past the cherry. Yeah, it's pretty intensely flavored. Yeah, that's perfect. That's the perfect way to it, describe it's it. Like, I wonder if it's because it's been sitting in the bottle for a year in my fridge. No, I think the barreling <laughs> process is what... I mean, oh, yeah. Because I don't think the On the Rocks that I bring is barreled. I think they mix the shit together. And I think that the bullet one was just mixed together, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So this... Yes, this is barrel-aged. Right. Yeah. Mm. 
Man, it's really good. <laughs> it is really good. So let's um let's go to the next one, right? All right, yeah. Because I want to go back and compare them. I think because I know what this tastes like. I've drank this one a lot. You have. Yeah, I've had this a few times and I've liked it. Yeah. I mean, it's I felt like it's not perfect, but I've gone to people's houses and just drank this exactly like they want me to do. Just pour it out in the glass over ice and drink it. All and right, get the fuck cool. out. So so <laughs> what's uh, <laughs> so what's uh, what's in it? All right, so I should probably read that. Yeah. <laughs> A classic Manhattan crafted from Basil Hayden dark rye, oh, which I thought was a very oh, interesting. interesting, very interesting choice. A straight rye whiskey, Canadian whiskey, port wine, sweet vermouth, and bitters. It's sixty-five proof. Okay, okay, again lower, right, than the other and one. And it's um, take it East Coast easy with this take sweet. It easy. Take, take it easy. easy. Take it easy. Don't let, let the, the sound, sound of your, your own wheels drive you crazy. Suck it, crickets. That was good. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, crickets. <laughs> Take it East Coast easy with this sweet and sophisticated sip. The spicy complexity of Basil Hayden dark rye is perfectly balanced with the fruity notes of sweet vermouth and the acid of the bitters. The result is a flavor experience a hundred stories high. <laughs> Pour over ice and enjoy. And then there's something really small here, which I think is a government warning. <laughs> yeah, so let's smell it. What do you get? Yeah. I mean, really a lot on the nose. Very sweet. I smell the vermouth. Wow. I can kind of smell yeah. the dark rye. I get another year. All right. Okay, go ahead. I actually get an event. I get a birthday oh. party with spiked punch. Oh, okay. my God. Right. So she like, was eight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably. Right, right. And she spiked the punch. <laughs> <laughs> If it made me money, more than likely, <laughs> that probably Every day happened. I'm also living. <laughs> it's really good. Doesn't it give you that though? Doesn't it give you like punch yeah, with yeah, a little yeah. bit of sprite bit, yeah. in it? And oh, you know what? It does. I know exactly what you're saying because yeah. it, it has an effervescent sort of smell to yes. it. Yes. Yeah. There's a strong fruit note to it. Hmm. I'm going back and taste it. Wow, one. that's really good. That is. Oh God, this is head and shoulders that. better than their old fashioned. Their old yeah. fashioned, exactly. It's the same company, and yet this one. And I've told you, I've. Brought, yeah. I, drank, yeah. I drank this more than once. In fact, I already had this one at my house. I'm calling their old other one the old trashin. You're right. <laughs> but the on the go Manhattan rocks. And this one, once again, is the Sue same, liked it. it's the same price. I liked it too. Well, laugh, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> laugh, monkey, laugh, monkey, laugh, monkey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I don't know which one I like better because they are they're similar. They're, di- they're similar, but it's um Scott. there are differences. Oh shit, Ed's pouring them together. I just poured them together just because. Oh wow, we should do this for New Year's Eve. The second one you like? Yeah, yeah. No? Okay, I love them both. I like yeah. Them both. The, the second one is less, I don't know how to describe it, less syrupy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, definitely. Right? True. And also less sort of in your face. This is much smoother. And what was the, pr- yes. oh, for the 74 and 65, Yeah, and right? that could be the reason. It's 65, right? All right, so I still like the High West. The High okay. West is winning yeah, for me The High right West now. is winning for me, but at the price. Yeah. So this would be 20, let's call it 21 for the bottle. This is almost 50. So when you're looking at, you can get two of these. Yeah. Right. I mean, I think that sells it. Wouldn't you rather tweak this a little bit? And yeah. I really think it was a, such a unique choice to go with the Basil Hayden Dark Rye, which I don't think is a normal go-to for Manhattan. So it's I think not really, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's really good the way they did it. All yeah. right, so let's taste my Scott Hatton. Oh, yeah. So now this is the one that we all really love. Uh, I mean, honestly, Scott's there's... The, concoction. Yeah, my concoction. Yeah. I put the cock in concoction. Oh. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really getting anything off the nose. Uh, no. I, you it's know, like I, I, I was like, wait a minute. Am I doing this wrong? <laughs> am I smelling maybe, wrong? Maybe I didn't make it right. <laughs> <laughs> What's going did on? You, did you chill this? I did. It tastes a little watered down to a normal Scott Hatton. It does a little. It's not as intensely flavored as these. It's perfectly fine, but I find it very mild in comparison to the other two. I almost want you to stop and make Manhattan. And make another one? Yeah. I feel like this has gone flat somehow. This is not your normal Scott Hatton. I have Mm. an update. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. This is sitting outside in front of the fire pit. Mm. You chill, like you're watching, you're just yeah. relaxing because porn. it's so mild. You're out there watching but porn it's... by the fire pit. Oh, uh, you know, yeah. um, <laughs> wow. You know, I guess. You know, you do whatever she was you out of like control. To, right? I don't know what I don't know what happened. <laughs> she was trying to have a lovely little right, like a nice little afternoon, right, I know. And, the uh, sunset. And, and, and she was just like porn, 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 porn. <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, so I'll tell you how I made it, and then we can just break real quick yeah. and make it again, because I think I agree with you that maybe I didn't make it right, but I use bullet rye yeah. in a four-to-one ratio to the Koki Torino right. vermouth. Which I don't okay. taste hardly any Koki Torino And uh, orange bitters from Woodford Reserve. I like it. I really do. But if you want to add something, if you think it needs a little bit more I just more feel to... like it's missing something that makes you and me go, ooh, every time mm-hmm. we have it. Yeah. All right. So we're going to make a Manhattan we really don't need just because right. we have nothing else to do with our lives. <laughs> right. Okay. We'll be right back. Hey, and we're back, everybody, with our new Scott Hatton. Mm, yes. Already and looking darker than the other one. It definitely yeah. is. And you know what? What might have happened is... Once I, you go dark, you never come back. <laughs> I might have uh, put it on too much ice and maybe let it sit and got distracted because I was doing a bunch of things before right. we set up. Okay. Um, well, exactly. Yeah, and it, and it, it yeah. kind of watered it down. It tastes a little watered down. So this one was just poured. Right. Wow, that's what I'm talking about, bro. Not even yeah. fucking close. That's yeah. That's yes. delicious. This is the best one right now. So this is wow. better than the first two, and it should be because it was just freshly made. It's oh, got a little wow. bit of cherry juice in it. It's got that's really the, good, Scott. The cokey vermouth, bullet rye. <laughs> it really is good. I'm not, I'm not even like just toot my own horn. <laughs> yeah. so this is fucking hey, delicious. Just, it's <laughs> Scott. so much better than the one he gave us earlier. That was his. That I can't even explain and it to we're you. Like, it's, yeah. it's good. Right, it's, okay. It's, it's okay. It's you know, I'm if, sorry. If, if, if you know something ever happens, like oh, I don't know, Ed can't do the podcast anymore. Right. You definitely have a future in bottling and yeah. you know putting stuff together right. for other you know whiskey like brands. Scott's ready right. to drink. Scott yeah. Hatton can be a thing. Let's make that a thing. It'll have like yeah. the Scott seal of approval on it, and they're yeah. like, oh, dude, you got to get it. Right. It's got stamped the whiskey tangent. Scott Hatton. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I have to tell you, like, honestly, we've had so many of them that me and Siobhan were drinking this. We're like, this sucks. What the fuck's happening here? Like, his Manhattans are really good. They're way better than mine. The only one I like even as close is the one that Anders makes for me at the local. Mm -hmm. And that's a completely different recipe. He makes the 1890. He makes the original Manhattan. The 1895 recipe. Right. And that is a completely different. He makes the original vampire recipe. Right. Go back to episode 30 for that one. Oh, my God. Poorly bad. (laughs) And so, um, no, that's not that one. I know, but it all relates to vampires. So. (laughs) Oh, right. That's true. The High West is still delicious. I'm going side by side. Yeah, I drank them all in succession, and um, they're all really similar. Mm -hmm. Like, these are great. All of these are great. Scott's is a little bit better, but I mean, tasting Scott's against theirs tells me how good theirs is. If I had to go somewhere, taking any of these with me would be a dream. Yeah. And I've done it. I've taken the On the Rocks one with me on two different occasions when I was going to like a beer heavy house, you know. And it gives me like four good drinks while I'm there. And you shouldn't really drink more than four Manhattans while you're out in the world, let's be honest. If I ever get married, which I'll never, it'll never happen. Okay. But if it ever did. Okay. And to me, but go ahead. <laughs> well, since it's never going to happen, why can't I be part of the part of the fantasy? It's fantasy. Right. Okay. Right. right. So if I ever get married, right. I'm going to have you sell this on the side. We could do a side hustle. Oh, oh nice. right. So nice. on the at your wedding, right at the wedding. <laughs> wow, I can't see why that would go over bad. <laughs> it wouldn't. It'll just be like, yep. oh, it's Siobhan. Well, you know what? Listen, <laughs> you know, Siobhan and me. Every now and then, we both have strong opinions. But Siobhan and me get in fights, but you know what really brings us together is the makeup sex. I think that's what's important. <laughs> oh, you mean in terms of that you made it up? <laughs> yes. Yes. Exactly. The made up sex. Made <laughs> up sex, yes. That's you have to break exactly. it down. Exactly. Don't put it all together. Uh, you have to break that down individually. So, uh, so what's interesting about all of these being very similar? Even thank you for saying yes. that mine was very good. Yeah. It's you know an expense and preparation to make a cocktail of your own right. at home, exactly. even if you're going to bottle it and bring it to right. a party. Yes. So if you can just bypass all that and just pick something off the shelf, then uh, that's also worth it if that's right. worth your time. So I actually think that the On the Rocks is the winner here because of the price point being mm-hmm. really $11 for a 375 which is four good drinks. Right. Well, so I don't really know. I would have to price that out and I have no idea what But I can't be. believe it would be cheaper than $11 for four drinks. <laughs> I don't drinks. know. I don't think it would. But even if it was, you have to bottle it up then and take it with you. Yeah. Now, what, I, what you could do is you could open up the 375 bottle, pour a little cherry juice in to kind of give you what that's missing because I think the On the Rocks is missing mm. the... Uh, the cherries yeah. to kind of make it a little bit sweeter. Yeah, that's my little extra thing I yeah. do. Right. Dip Just a, a, little, bar spoon. a little tiny bar spoon of, of cherry juice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <gasps> so now <laughs> we're going to go into round two of Quizki. Round two. <laughs> so. 
So this is round two where the points have doubled. 200 for a first chime in answer, 100 for a second chime in answer, and plus or minus 50 for a third chime in Scott, answer. Scott, I read somewhere that girls aren't good at quiz keys. Wow. You're just trolling now. I mean, that's what I heard. Oh, you read that on your shit-ass Android? <laughs> <laughs> Said the guy in second place. <laughs> I got him right where I want him. Uh, okay. <laughs> Do you? Uh, so <laughs> this round will be about cocktails. So round two, question one. According to the Guinness World Records, the largest cocktail ever made was by Nick Nakora in Sacramento, California in July of 2012, coming in at a whopping 10,500 gallons. Oh, my God. What kind of cocktail was it? Was it A, a Manhattan, B, a martini, C, a margarita, or D, mint julep? Ed. California's got to be a margarita. That is correct. Ah, it's a that, margarita. It has to be a margarita in California. Wow, good one, Ed. Oh. Um, that's 200 points for Ed. Ladies, uh. got to <laughs> catch up. Question number two. Sometime in the early 1930s, the cocktail known as Death in the Afternoon, oh, God. which combined absinthe and champagne, was created by this famous author. Was it A, Agatha Christie, B, Ernest Hemingway, C, George Orwell, or D, J.R.R. R. Tolkien? Sue. B. Ernest Hemingway? That is correct. Yes. Woo! That's who I was coming for. Yeah, he's a you famous... Were coming, you were coming for who? He was coming Me for... Me or Ernest? Ernest Hemingway. Uh, I, I would come wow. for either. Uh, <laughs> he I was a man's man. <laughs> I came for you, for you. I came for you. Wow. And if Ernest Hemingway was here, that I'd come on him too. Oh, my God. <laughs> There's always regret. <laughs> There's always regret. <clears throat> regret the new fragrance from Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> As in, she regrets sitting next to Ed. <laughs> I warned her. I warned her. And she should know better by now. She's done it before. Yeah, she has. Okay, so. I bought my ticket. <laughs> you, you got in the seat. <laughs> you drank your drinks. <laughs> I say let her crash. Listen, I'm a big guy. Every now and then, a side boob graze happens. It just naturally happens. It's nothing intentional. I know. I totally elbowed her in a boob earlier. Was, I'll probably have a bruise from I that know. One. I'm so sorry. <laughs> They're okay. ample. They are. Like you've never had a bruise there before. Hello. A broobs. A broobs? (laughs) Broobs. Broobs. It's like a beer with boobs. A broobs. I told you it gets rough sometimes. That's all I know. We talked about that earlier. We will not be discussing that. No. No. Uh, Because hi, Siobhan's dad. (laughs) Hi, dad. (laughs) We haven't done that in a while. Okay. Question number three in round two. In 2014, to commemorate the 20th Commonwealth Games, a sort of mini Olympics for countries that were or are members of the British Commonwealth, Mm -hmm. a Scottish bartender created a cocktail made with one ingredient sourced from each member country. How many ingredients were in the Commonwealth cocktail? A, 44, B, 53, C, 62, or D, 71? Siobhan. 71. 71 is the correct answer. Wow, that's unbelievable. What year was that? 2014. There's that many still around? Well, it says are or were. So, oh. Yeah, so both. Oh. I was going to say, that's definitely the heyday for sure. Yeah, yeah. So Siobhan also gets to Nice points. answer, Siobhan. Wow. Thank you. It's so hot when you get the right answer. Oh, my God. I'm hot all the time. I know. <laughs> so that's why oh I elbowed God. you in the boob earlier. No. Oh. I couldn't resist. <laughs> oh God. It's going to be going the spank bank later. Damn. Oh my God. <laughs> Should we take a break so we can neck? Oh, wow. Wow. Because <laughs> all of a sudden it's happy days. Oh, uh, <laughs> Right. We're going up to Inspiration Point. I'll watch the submarine races <laughs> while we neck. Yeah. I found my thrill. thrill. All right. <laughs> Uh, uh, question number four. Yeah. Set on the 118th floor of the International Commerce Center at 1,690 feet above sea level, the Ozone Cocktail Bar is the highest in the world, offering views across Victoria Harbor in what city? Is it A, Hong Kong, China, B, Seoul, South Korea, C, Dubai, United Arab Emirates, or D, New York City, USA? Siobhan. Dubai. That is incorrect. Fuck me. Ed. It's Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the correct answer. All right. Ed, 100 points for the second chime and answer. All right. The last question in round two. During the 1920s, Harry... Potter. No. Houdini. No. McElhone. 
Owner of Harry's New York Bar, located in Paris, France, and oh, yeah. famed creator of the Boulevardier, uh -huh. also created a cocktail called the Monkey Gland, named after... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. Yeah. Named after the pseudoscientific idea that grafting tissue from a monkey's testicles into people would increase their longevity. What? Well, yeah. yeah. You mean like in the sack longevity? <laughs> I don't know. I want to know. Uh, I think life longevity. I don't think that's true. But I think <laughs> Well, I said pseudoscientific. Okay. All right. This was the 1920s after all. What is the base spirit used to make a monkey gland cocktail? Is it A, absinthe, B, gin, C, rum, or D, scotch? Ed. Scotch. D, scotch? That is incorrect. Fuck me. Sue. Please. B. Sue, B, gin? Mm. Good one. That is the correct answer. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to need something to cover up that taste. <laughs> so Sue gets 100. I know my <clears throat> monkey balls. Tabulating the <laughs> scores. Okay, so in round two, Ed had 300 points, Sue had 300 points, and Siobhan had 200 points. <gasps> At the end of round two... God damn it, Sue. <gasps> Sue is winning Sue. with 425. Ed has 400, and Siobhan is not too far behind at 250. Bum, bum, ba <laughs> Anything is possible in round three where the points are triple, <gasps> but there are only three questions. And then we'll do the final round in which we bet all our points Jeopardy style. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are going to take a quick break. And, and bring out the surprise cocktail, which I never even knew was a cocktail, oh, yeah. except it is a cocktail and it's weird. I'm really excited about it. We'll be right back. We're back. And Scott's going to tell us about the next cocktail. Oh yeah, perfect. God. Perfect. Perfect. All right. <laughs> wow. I'm totally distracted <laughs> now. Okay. Yeah. So this is the surprise cocktail that Ed mentioned earlier. And Ed actually bought this. I should know it was a free bottle choice when I renewed my membership to Flaviar. Oh. Um, Interesting. It wasn't that expensive, like $40 or something. Okay. But I'd never heard of it before, so I chose it. Interesting. Yeah. And here it is on a bottled cocktail episode yeah. because he didn't realize it was a bottled cocktail. And then we looked at it and was like, I think this is yeah. a cocktail. They said it was like a rum rye combo, but I didn't realize they added bitters and made a cocktail. Shit. So tell us what it is. Scott. Yeah. So this is the Hercules Mulligan rum and rye. The description from the red site, their website. <laughs> red site. It sounds red racist. Red site sounds racist. Like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> ruh -roh. Ruh -roh. <laughs> Scott's off the reservation. <laughs> Ah. Also racist. Also racist. I was going to say like a Japanese accent, but you know. <laughs> a Jackcent. Oh. <laughs> oh my God, we're going to get canceled. I know. All right. <clears throat> this rare spirit was inspired by the real historical figure of the American Revolution, Hercules Mulligan, an Irish-born tailor and spy who saved the life of George Washington on more than one occasion. As his namesake rum and rye is based on a unique recipe from the period that embodies what the man stood for, a spirit of independence. First, three aged Caribbean rums are blended with three American rye whiskeys to create an equilibrium of duality. Would it be like if you were surrounded by seven seas of rye? <laughs> what? It's the Queen song. Oh, God. Oh, wow. So obscure. Super Cricket. Super, <laughs> super Cricket. It's very, very deep cut. Super Cricket. It's a job for Super Cricket. You know what? It's going to be such a deep cut. You might as well just play Flash. It's <laughs> such a play deep Flash. It's okay? such a deep cut that Brian May forgot he wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this rum and rye blend is then combined with macerated fresh organic ginger, and it's the essence of this magical root, that was my nickname in college, that gives what? the blend... Groot? A, no, mm -hmm. magical root. Oh. I'm Groot. Mm. Mm. <laughs> that gives the blend a kick. Because it I'm magically Groot. disappears. Oh, no. <laughs> no, because it magically grows. Because it's oh. a yeah. magical uh. root. And then disappears into holes. Mm. <laughs> That's where you're going, right, Sue? That's where yes. you're going. Okay. That's where we're Get going. Get out of my head, Scott. Wow. <laughs> Get off I'm, of mine. <laughs> I'm, I'm, oh, wait. I'm Groot. <laughs> I'm Groot. I'm, I'm, just, Groot. I'm Groot. Okay. Oh, let me finish this. Okay. 
Okay. It's, an and scene. it's the essence of this magical root that gives the blend a kick and builds its distinctive character. And to finish this elegant potion, a dash of bespoke bitters, there's the bespoke bitters again, <laughs> and a splash of simple syrup are added and then hand blended, hand bottled, hand sealed, and hand jerked off. Labeled. <laughs> <Jesus>. Wow. <laughs> hand handled. <laughs> no fakery here, only honest to God ingredients that capture the essence of a bittersweet life. So what exactly is in this now after so, all that? So dark. <laughs> um, we don't know the ratio though, do we? No. See, we don't know how much rye whiskey and how much rum is in there. It's basically ginger, bitters, simple syrup, rum, and rye. Right. Okay. It's 86 proof. Uh, wow. The price is, as you said, around $38. I was looking online to see if this is like a named cocktail or something. And I couldn't really find wow. anything like it. No, I think it's their invention for sure. The and nose, man. Get on the nose on this. That's a weird smell. All right. The, oh, no. Another it's, another it's, year is coming. It's, it's, when yes. I, it's when I was four and I was lost in the mall. <laughs> yeah, this is sadness. <laughs> no. This it's is giving me 1985 yeah. Saturday morning turning on my first computer it's hmm. the smell of science. It's the smell of technology. Technology, yes. <laughs> thank it, you. It has sort of a, a chemically vinyl smell. It's to a it. very you. deep smell. Yes. It's, a, it's the deepest thing we smell tonight. Is that fair, everybody? It's, it's not really sexy. It's no. not inviting. Mm. Well, it doesn't push me away. But it's not as sweet as I expected it to be. But if it starts with leather, I'm out. Having rum mm. in it. I'm Groot. <sighs> All right, yeah. let's let's uh, let's give it a taste. I'm scared. Ooh, my, oh, oh my oh god. god good lord wow. what is that somebody what wow. is that oh that's wow. aggressive oh my god it's so <laughs> interesting oh. there's a lot going on oh. wow. sue's like oh that was aggressive <laughs> i mean the ginger hits you yeah. with the, what that is i mean for the price range of this this is unbelievably complex this is the ginger hitting you in the this face. is a summer's that day that is impressive the that ginger is very the, impressive. the ginger unzipped his pants yeah. he wow. pulled out his ginger penis and wow. he slapped you right on the mouth damn <laughs> jesus <laughs> sorry i mean you got me on that i'm actually like <laughs> scott settle down <laughs> oh my god i've shocked ed shocking the monkey <laughs> I mean, I guess what to put people in perspective. Yeah. When we taste as much as we taste on this podcast to get something that we can't categorize right away. Like it just came out of nowhere. Like this is not what I expected. And it doesn't taste like rum or rye. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's a cocktail made with a really strong, high proof whiskey. Yeah. So I suggested that Sue drop some water in hers yeah. and um, it's still not doing it for no. her. Is it the ginger? Maybe it's the ginger. Maybe it's the ginger. ginger is very you know. strong. It's very strong. And, yeah. and so I love is, it though. Is that wow. not a flavor that you yeah. like? I like it too. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that's why you don't like this. Yeah. That makes sense because it's very ginger forward. Oh, wow. Whatever. Yeah. yeah because oh it's, my God. It's so it's, good. It's yeah. a good point to make Slap though. Slap me in the face. Hello, ginger fruit or yeah. ginger yeah. Yeah. Right. With, with its ginger yeah. penis. So you, like wouldn't want, so you wouldn't like ginger in your butt then, evidently. No. I hear that burn. I'll have, I hear I'll have that to take that yeah. off the list. Foreshadowing. Of, I'll have to take that off the list of things in my butt. <laughs> yeah, I hear that burns. Yeah. But anyway. Ginger, no. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> okay, so let's taste my uh, yes. approximation, having never tasted what this is like. So what I took was uh, three ounces of bullet rye. Oh my God. Three ounces of gosling black seal dark rum, an ounce and a half of ginger syrup, which okay. I made. Just and then so. four dashes of molasses bitters. And I think that's what you're smelling. That's yeah, This exactly. is the Ricola. That's what it is. You're uh, smelling. Cough drop. Yeah, yes. You're smelling the, I, the bitters. I think Sue's yes. going to like this better. My guess. But I love their cough drop. So let's see what happens. Does anyone else smell celery at all? Or is it just me? Like it's a weird. I mean, s- I mean it's like a vegetal. Yeah. It, yeah. More of a vegetable kind of. Oh, I mean, yours is delicious, Scott. It doesn't taste anything like theirs, but it's really good. Uh, is there a lot of ginger in this? It doesn't have as much ginger. No, maple. I don't taste celery. I only it just it. has a, a a touch of ginger. Oh yeah, it does taste maple, like maple, banana. Oh, she nut. said napalm. I'm <laughs> like, it tastes like napalm, like burning peasants or something. <laughs> <laughs> so the, so the maple um I did use the brown sugar syrup on this with the ginger in it infused so that could be where the That's maple is I coming t- from. I, I taste a lot of the ginger. And again, though, I have to tell you, I like theirs better. But Scott, yours is delicious. Yours <laughs> it's is a good cocktail. Yours it is, is a tremendous summer cocktail. Whatever you did, you should write that down. Yeah, I did. That's it, good. This is something that I would never have tried before. Wow. Mixing rum and rye. Wow, it's so good. I want to drink yours all day in the sun. Like that I sounds go. like sex. Wow. <laughs> 
What exactly sounds like sex? Like, okay. oh, he wants to drink it all day. He wants to drink, fun. yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> and by it, I, okay. Okay. I appreciate oh, your okay. I appreciate right. your confidence in me for the all day part. <laughs> <laughs> and by all day, you mean twelve minutes. Twelve minutes in a. <laughs> One drink. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. This is great. It's so sunny out. Ah, ah, oh. Rock your world for 12 minutes, baby. Holy Jesus Christ. We are off the rails today. I can't see why we've had 19 drinks. Yeah, and I still have more in front of me. Oh No, but we only had two this time. So, um, well, thank you. I mean, I honestly. I would love to be drank all day. Tasted it. Only to ensure that it didn't taste terrible. Yeah. But I just tried to approximate what so, they said was in that drink. Right. And obviously, it's different. Yeah. Like, theirs is much more herbaceous and pungent. They have way more ginger in yeah. theirs than I do. Uh, more raw ginger. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's a lot of water. Soup. I mean, I really like the ginger. So the uh, Hercules Mulligan tastes what I taste when I really like, like a dark and stormy is oh really God. hitting you really well with yeah. the rum yeah, and the, the ginger beer. Yeah. But I also like mine because mine is uh, smoother. Oh, so listen, I mean, Mine's more of a cocktail, whereas two, theirs is something different. They're completely yeah. two different things. They created a new form of liquor. Yeah. And, you, and, <laughs> yeah. You, and you've created a cocktail. <laughs> right. But, yeah. but like, no. I, can I drink this all day? No. Yeah. So no, right. didn't like the first one, but did like mine. So tell yes. me about the contrast you found. Well, it's hard to contrast because, as you were saying, completely different. Yeah. It's not like, oh, this was a little, you know, no, completely different. I am obviously you don't know until you try it, and mm -hmm. when you're saying this is ginger, so now I just learned if anything's ginger forward or like I'll be like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah no, and yours is just delicious. No, well, it's thank just you. Very good. Yeah, um, Scott's is more it's enjoyable. So, oh, it's for the it's person, not even a comparison. But for me, yeah. the Hercules Mulligan is way more enjoyable because I've never had anything like it, so I'm intrigued. No, I'm intrigued by it too. I really yeah. like it. So I think we need a squirt of lime in here, but I'll be, I'll be sitting. Oh, I, I do have a lime. Yeah, we'll do that off air. Just in case <laughs> anyone was wondering, I love the both. I really did. Do I you? Like the both of them, yeah. Yeah. I was wondering. I didn't know you didn't share. I, I thought you shared. I'm so sorry. I thought you did share. I just did that for Sue because she wasn't. Like, I was making very yeah. like certainly, facial expressions. It certainly is possible that I did, but I don't remember. Fuck if I know. Fuck if I know. All right. So before we wrap up all our thoughts on these three cocktails. Oh, stop, please. We're <laughs> going to have. <laughs> Round three in the final round of quiz game! Oh, yeah. Ed's name for this round is Gabe's a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so Siobhan's is Gabe's bitch. <laughs> I like that. All right, I'm going to get confused. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I don't know why you're confused because we all know Gabe's a bitch. Oh, oh no. I mean, just Gabe. for the record, wait, 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 hold up. If you're feeling bad for Gabe, he gave me a flask that says little bitch on it, okay? So let's not <laughs> act like it's but, all one sided. But you know what he gave me? He gave me a flask that says the mayor. Oh, that's nice. And it was nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't get anything. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't either. Gabe, you are a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Round three, the questions could be either about glass bottles or cocktails. Oh, my God. Okay. It's a wild card round. Right. All right. So to reiterate the scores, uh, Sue is in the lead with 425. Wait a minute. Who's in the lead? Wait, who's in the lead? <laughs> Sue is in the lead in front of 425. Say my oh, name. Pixie Pie yes. is in the lead with 425. <laughs> who's in second? Ed is in second with... No, uh, uh, who's in second? Oh, Gabe's a bitch is in second with 400. <laughs> and Gabe's bitch... Oh. <laughs> Is in last place, but still within reach. Sorry, game. With 250. All right. Go ahead. Round three points are tripled. 300 for a first chime in correct answer. 150 for a second chime in correct answer. And plus or minus 75 for a third chime in correct incorrect answer. All right. Question number one. Some cocktails are served with plastic or metal stirrers, commonly known as swizzle sticks. Mm -hmm. Where does the name swizzle stick come from? A, an aromatic plant that grows in the Caribbean. B, a brand of pencils popular in the 18th century. C, a portmanteau of the English word swig and fizzle. Or D, the German word for agitate. Ed. We're going to go with the uh, German word. The German word for agitate? Swizzle? That is incorrect. <gasps> Siobhan? I'm going to go with B. B, a brand of pencils? That is incorrect. 
So, Sue, you can buzz in or not. I'm going with the fizzle. It's the swig and fizzle? Yes. That is incorrect. Oh, man. It is a aromatic plant that grows in the Caribbean. Damn it. Oh, my God. And, called and, the swizzle stick tree. And Gabe's a bitch moves into first place. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Question number two. Adding certain compounds to glass during manufacturing can create an array of colors. Which one creates purple? Is it A, potassium chloride, B, potassium oxide, C, nickel oxide, or D, nickel back? <laughs> Ed. <laughs> C. C, nickel oxide. That is the correct answer. Yes, it is. You are such yeah. an asshole. Wow. Damn. Because that was my answer. Damn. Yeah, that, that was my, that was my you know tip. What? That was he my tip. He has an advantage because he has like super thumbs. So I think. <laughs> he does have very large thumbs. Right. And my, the button is very big. My advantage is I have an Android. I know. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh. My is an Android. <laughs> no one's jealous of that thing, man. Man. All right. Question number three. Final question in round three. Mm -hmm. In 2019, the bar at the Ritz Carlton in Tokyo, Japan, created the most expensive cocktail in the world, costing 2 million yen. What? Which is about $15,000 US. What? Named after the James Bond movie Diamonds Are Forever, the drink is made using just three ingredients, the most expensive of which is A, the Macallan 1926 Scotch, B, the Taste of Diamonds Luxury Champagne, C, Grand Marnier quintessence liqueur, or D, an actual one carat diamond. Siobhan. A. A, the Macallan Scotch. That is incorrect. Nice guess, though. Sue. C. The, the answer is always the, C. The Just liqueur. Go with C. The liqueur. <laughs> yes. That is incorrect. Ed. Full carat diamond. Is the correct answer. Oh. So Ed gets 75 points. Oh. I don't golf know. Clap. Yeah, the, golf clap. Yeah, golf clap. In round three, Ed got 375 points. Sue got negative 75. <laughs> so at the end of round three, going into the final round, the final question, Ed has 775 points. Sue has 350. And Siobhan has 250. Now, what I want you to do is text me how many points you want to bet on the final question. It is about cocktails. Bring it on. All right. Sue has made her bet. All bets are in. Okay. The final round question. One origin story for the word cocktail is that it's an anglicization of the French word coquetier, meaning egg cup, in which drinks were sometimes served in the 18th century in New Orleans. However, in 2016, spirits historian David Wondrich found plausible evidence for the word cocktail instead being slang term for this somewhat unsavory practice. A. Plucking out all of the rooster's tail feathers. B. Killing a chicken with your bare hands. C. Pouring chloroform into a woman's drink. Or D. Putting a piece of ginger in a horse's ass. I like them all. <laughs> I, really, I really do too. Yeah. Siobhan is in, and Sue is in, and Ed's is in. All right. So, we will start with Siobhan. Gabe's bitch yep. yes. has 250 points. Her answer was C, pouring chloroform into a woman's drink. Incorrect. But Siobhan bet zero points. Oh, brilliant. Oh. Brilliant. 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 She's going to backdoor into this watcher. Yep. She's a genius. <laughs> <laughs> so Sue had 350 points. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And she guessed A, oh. plucking out all of a rooster's feathers. Also incorrect. Uh. But Sue also bet zero points. Wow. Yes, baby. <laughs> so Sue is now in the lead. Mm. <laughs> so Ed has, Which direction did Ed go? <laughs> <laughs> right. Ed had 775 points. He guessed B, mm. killing a chicken with your bare hands. Also incorrect. Oh, right. oh. The correct answer is putting a piece of ginger up a horse's ass. <laughs> right. Ed bet all of his points, which means Sue is the winner. Congratulations, of her Sue. first 
ever. Yeah. Whiskey. So here's the explanation, which is hilarious. So horse dealers in the 18th century England would use the practice of figging or putting a piece of ginger in someone's butt on horses to make them cock up their tails, quote unquote, a sign to would-be buyers that the horse was spirited. Simultaneously, ginger was commonly being used to spice up drinks to make one feel livelier. From there, it wasn't long before someone made the connection and started calling drinks made with ginger ones that figuratively would Ah. cock your tail, Mm. which eventually got shortened to cocktail. Wow, cool. So cool. At some point thereafter in the United States, bartenders began using bitters to spice up drinks instead of ginger, but the term derived from the ginger stuck around. Isn't that wow. a great story? It is a great that story. Is. I just I thought, love that. That's just fantastic. You want to know what I thought it yeah. was? As you were doing the explanation, I said, you know what? It makes sense because if a horse can't go to the bathroom, they're going to stick a piece of ginger up there and what's going to come out of oh. his tail, mm. a nice, hard, big dookie cock. So <laughs> yeah. I was thinking cocktail. Wow. Wow. I have a hell of an imagination. <laughs> you do. <laughs> you do. Yeah. I mean, you taste in years for Christ's sake. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. All right. So let's round it up and say, which overall did you like out of all the ones we tasted tonight? Your Manhattan first. Wow. Thank you. And then the Hercules a mulligan thing for me was two. Okay. Just because it was so unique. Okay. Siobhan? All of yours first. Oh, my God. Um, oh, the just a baby. <laughs> <laughs> and the, um, what was the one that you had in the fridge forever? Oh, uh, the 36th vote, the uh, Manhattan from yeah. High West. Mm. That's very good. I agree. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. that was a good one. Sue, yes. how about you? The old fashioned, the first one? The bullet. Yeah, the bullet, the bullet one. That was my favorite. Okay, probably. the bullet old fashioned was Oh, your the favorite. bullet. The bullet was. Your absolute the, favorite of all of them. Yes. yes. Okay. It was, oh, it was wow. tits. Okay. Yeah. The, better than mine then. Uh, well, no, I'm kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, she said your three was number one. Your for threes all. were number one, but. She covered that. But with the <laughs> actual manufactured one. Teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> I want my Oreo cereal. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I mean, this has been amazing. Uh, I think, though, that picking one of these what about yours yeah what What do you mean oh my favorite oh wow i feel like Mm -hmm. i can't pick my own you can i can but i think out of the bottle cocktails while we're young you know god (laughs) it's really close between the bullet old-fashioned and the rum and rye because i really did like the really ginger forward of the rum and rye yeah but the bullet old-fashioned honestly i said it at the time that it might be the best old fashioned that I'd ever had. Yeah, ever I had. think it's so versatile. Like, yeah, the versatility speaks volumes to me on it. The bullet so. was good. Yeah, the bullet was very good. I mean, so I think you know it's really worth it to pull one of these off the shelf and go yeah. to a party with so it. Oh, absolutely. So your Manhattan was better, but the bullet actually beat you in the old fashioned. I think. Got you. And I thought the on the rocks one was pretty good too. But if you're a diehard whiskey person out there and you want to experience the Hercules Mulligan Rum and Rye, go yeah. find it. Go uh, find it. It's not easy to find, but it's out there. No, I think you have to order on their website. Oh wow, it's a limited number of bottles. Actually, it's and crazy. It's either Scott and I will bring it to you, <laughs> <laughs> or Siobhan. Yeah, or, or Siobhan. Small yeah. Fee. or Sue. Right. She could talk to you if she wants, but she doesn't have. To to talk right, to you. Right. She's just there to be cool. <laughs> Sue will talk to you, but not if you like the, the rum and rye. Or the Beatles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other thing. <laughs> All right, Ed. Take us out. If you're going to a party and it's a beer party and you're a whiskey guy, you don't feel like bringing everything with you, grab a few of these ready to drinks that we taught you tonight. If you're going old fashioned, grab the bullets. If you want to take a bottled Manhattan, you got two choices. The High West was delicious, but it's kind of pricey. And the On the Rocks comes in a little bit of a smaller version. And maybe you'd be able to drive home in that case. <laughs> or if you live near me, I can make a cocktail for you and bring it to your house. Right. Yes. Scott also makes a nice Manhattan. Scott Hatton. Well. All right. So um, for the Whiskey Tangent Podcast, I'm Ed. Uh, I'm Scott. I'm Sue. And I'm the mayor, Siobhan. All right. Cheers, everybody. Later. <laughs> If you enjoyed this podcast episode, be sure to check out our next episode, which is way better than this one. Oh, yeah. Also, follow and like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash whiskey tangent. 
And follow us on Twitter at Whiskey Tangent. You can follow me personally at That Whiskey Guy. And follow Scott at Giant Cup of Awesome, spelled A-W-S-U-M, just to be annoying. Hey! You can email us any questions, comments, or love at whiskeytangent at gmail.com. And of course, you can find us always at our podcast website, whiskeytangent.podbean.com.